Well guys, it's bottling day again. I'm super excited about this bottling day over previous bottling days because we tried some new stuff this time and I'm excited to sample it after six months sitting on the shelf. In case this is the first home brewing video you're seeing on our channel, jump back. There's actually a playlist where we share the many different forays into home brewing that we've tried. This is our third full cycle on home brewing. And what you're looking at here, these three uh, flavors on the right are mead, which is a honey wine. And the one on the left is apple cider, which is made with, get it, apples and some yeast. Now that we've been living in the house for about a year, I'm really excited to always have some of this stuff in the works because we have a temperature controlled environment all year round and it keeps well once it's bottled. Obviously it can keep for years. It's a great process to use some of the fruits that we either harvest from our garden or we forage uh, during the summer months, but then we can transform it into a wonderfully delightful beverage. We can either enjoy ourselves or what we really like to do is either give it away as a gift or take it to gatherings and kind of introduce people to the idea of home brewing and to honey wine. If you've watched one of our prior videos or you jump back, you'll see that we've been making huckleberry and raspberry meads. Uh, we had a copious amount of those two fruits that we wanted to preserve. But this year we had the fortunate opportunity to forage a bunch of Italian plums, something we really haven't had uh, access to before. And then we have a friend who runs an organic garden and she happens to have a peach tree. She didn't give us very many peaches and so most of those we enjoyed fresh because they were delicious. But I just had to know what does peach mead taste like. So we're going to find out today. And then if you haven't seen the video, last fall we did a massive food haul. We got our first deer, we foraged a bunch of apples, and then we also canned all the apricots that we foraged over summer into apricot salsa. If you haven't seen that video, give it a watch. It is incredible the amount of food that we were able to put in the freezers and on the shelf in one day. And this apple cider is a product of that. We were able to get, I think, 40 gallons of cider from, get this, free apples. We just picked them up off the ground, from neighbors and things that didn't have time to deal with it. We took it to a local cider press and we paid $1 per gallon of organic fresh pressed cider. And since we had so much, I thought, hey, why don't I give the whole hard cider thing a try. I've been wanting to do it for a long time and here we are, we've got our first batch. Something else I've been wanting to do is increase the batch size. The size of these batches is actually the most difficult way to make this product in about one to two gallon batches. You have a lot more work in racking and re-racking and uh, prep. So what we're trying to do is get to the point where I'm confident in our process and we can actually increase our batch size to something like five gallons. And then we could bottle one particular flavor once a year maybe, instead of what we're doing right now, which is about twice a year. If you're wondering, this stuff definitely gets better with age. It's pretty incredible that after what's called primary fermentation, which is only about a week, you can start to taste the flavors, the fruit and the alcohol and the honey and all that stuff, but it does not taste anywhere near as delicious as this stuff does after a minimum of six months and more like a year or even two years. The flavors become one and it starts to taste like a delicious product. I shared this resource in our last video and I'm probably gonna share it in all future videos because it's pretty shocking how powerful this ridiculously little uh, $5 book has been. This is where we got the confidence to start into mead making. We've been using local honey to do that and the recipes in here are insanely easy to follow. I mean, there's a few ingredients, there's a few instructions and that's it. But this last winter, I actually had somebody give us a bottle of hard cider that they had brewed locally, and it was amazing. So I said to myself, I've gotta try that. I've gotta get this cider thing figured out because I love cider, I love flavored ciders, and we just haven't figured out how to make it or not. 
So we decided to give it a try this year and I'm embarrassed at how simple this is. It's actually easier than making mead. All we needed was some delicious, delicious cider and some yeast. I don't want to go in depth on how to make mead, but I'll just say that I guess if you want to be a purist and a technical person, this is what's called melamel. It's actually a fruit honey wine. So because we add fruit, it's no longer technically mead. Mead is simply honey and water. This has fruit added to it. So we're making a fruit honey wine. The difference is the cider has the sugar already in it. It comes from the apples. So we don't have to add honey to get alcohol. All you need to do is add yeast. I don't know why, but for some reason I thought there was some elaborate process in making ciders. And it turns out it's extremely simple. The fundamental difference between these two beverages is yeast. Of course, we've got honey in here for sugar and the sugar is already present in the apples, so we don't need to add any unless we wanted to increase the alcohol content. But it turns out the only difference is the strain of yeast that we're using. We actually use a very similar yeast for this in the mead, but there's a very slight difference here. It's called a sparkling wine yeast, sparkling wine yeast. And this stuff is just as cheap, just as accessible and available as mead yeast is. So that's it. I put the cider in a five gallon bucket. I apportioned the correct amount of yeast. We put it through primary. We re-racked it. We've done all the same things that we would do for mead, only this is just basically apple juice. I mean, that's as simple as cider is. Now caveat, if you're gonna take this stuff super seriously and you wanna become a connoisseur, you know how wine is different year over year and there are certain years where people go nuts and they pay $400 a bottle? Well, that's gonna happen with this stuff too because your honey is gonna change year over year. Depends on what's floral, uh, what are the bees using to for nectar, what are they, where are they getting their sugars from, how are they doing it? It's gonna change the flavor of everything, right? And the same thing with fruit. So I'm not gonna be tasting this stuff and thinking, oh, is this an 1822 Merlot from central France? No, it's home brewed from right around here in our neighborhood. But the thing is, we have brewed the same flavors three years in a row and they all taste uniquely different. And of course, that's a more refined taste. So I wanna say, if you're used to drinking ciders from the store and you start home brewing, don't judge your brews immediately. Take some time and be patient and get to know them and you'll find that they have some uniquities that are kind of a change of pace from what you buy in the store, which somehow, year over year, taste exactly the same. All right, I just gave away the secret on cider, so I fully expect that a million people are gonna try this, and if you're curious, can you do this with store-bought cider? Absolutely, but I will say it's way more rewarding if by some chance there's an apple tree in your town or your neighborhood where the apples are falling on the ground and rotting, if you can turn those into this, it's way better. I suppose it's worth mentioning really quick that the cost of cider is also substantially less. Honey is expensive, especially raw local honey. You're going to pay a premium. So I'm excited about cider for that reason because from a volume and cost perspective, we can make a crazy amount of this. And that makes me excited because there are flavors that I want to add to this, maybe making like a huckleberry cider. Doesn't that sound delicious? So I'd like to try taking these ciders and turn them into multiple different things. So here we're looking at only four gallons. We actually have 10 gallons of product that we need to get bottled up today. If you talk to anybody who's into home brewing or you read any home, blue, home brewing blogs or anything like that, basically where most of your cost actually comes in is in bottling. Glass is expensive. It's reusable, but it has a very steep upfront cost. Uh, last year, before we bottled, we actually made some beautiful custom bottles, and we thought it would be an amazing thing to just be able to gift these and share these with other people. So we had a logo engraved on them, and it was very expensive. Well, I'm just gonna say, unfortunately, you would think that engraving your logo on a bottle would help it to come home, and the answer is it does not. We've still got about a third of those bottles that are somewhere, and they've never come home. So to our credit, what we do is we save all of our glass throughout the year. These are kombucha bottles, salad dressing bottles, barbecue sauce bottles, um, things people give us. And in the end, we accumulate 
hundreds of dollars in glass. And this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be giving away glass we don't care if it ever comes back. If it ends up in the recycle or somebody repurposes it, whatever, it doesn't matter. But our nice glass that we spend a lot of money for, those are bottles that we're gonna keep for ourselves either for our personal use or to take to gatherings, things like that. Or if we wanna give a really, really special gift and we're okay if the bottle doesn't come back. But for the majority of the gifts that we give, if you guys get one from us, it's probably coming in one of these glass bottles because unfortunately, we can't afford the glass bill on top of all the other expenses involved. It also can't really be understated the value of sterilizing or sanitizing all of these bottles. It is possible that these brews could be in these bottles for years and it would be a tragedy to go through all the effort to make all these wonderful beverages only to have something contaminate the bottle and you end up losing it to a rogue yeast or something like that. So I've spent over two hours hand washing, sanitizing, removing labels, and getting these things ready, pretending like there's possibility that some of these jars could have stuff in them for years to come. So it's worth saying, don't take the bottling part of this process for granted. It is a very important step in the home brewing process and it can ruin a magical batch of mead or cider. I'm most excited about the peach, and I think it's going to taste the best because it's the yeah. like, kind of the rarest fruit. I agree. That we have access to that one's going to so be I'm privileged. I'm going to try this one first. Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. Yep, I agree. I think it's going to get better, so I think it's good already. But yeah. with age, maybe um, another six months. We're going to try blueberry next. Yep. Try blueberry. You've already had that, so I'm curious if you see like if you taste any difference between past years. I haven't tasted the past years enough. Oh, gotcha. That's good. Yep. I like the peach more. Blueberry hasn't failed us. Okay. Plum's exciting. Wait for this, guys. Wait for it. That's good. Oh, really? I thought you would just like I go. Feel, wow. I kind of feel like my palate's messed up from these two. Yep, it is. But this one's like I would say it's the smoothest. It is. We need some coffee beans for you to sniff or something. We need to go wine tasting so we know how we're supposed to do or this like business. Have ginger to clear the palate. Oh, ginger, yeah, or something and like then, that. Apple cider kind of is my second most exciting thing. Yep, because it's new. No, because I feel like we have access to so many apples. Oh yeah, that's true, yep. And the ability to press them. Yep. We can make just copious amounts of this if it's Yeah, good. from a quantity perspective, cider's a win for sure. You know, I feel like my palate is, like this is so strong. Yep. Like what I tasted this the other night, mm -hmm. it was really good. Yeah, maybe we screwed it up so right already. So right now huh? this is kind of mild tasting. It is. But I feel like they're all a win. I actually feel like maybe this is a little bit watered down tasting. Mm. I can't really nail it down. It's just, it's not pungent. It's not powerful. So I don't know if we need to distill this or what. I don't know what the actual alcohol content of the cider is compared to these, but these are pretty high, like 11 to 14%. And I think the cider is probably closer to six or seven. Yeah, I, I would say these do taste stronger to me. Yep, and we're not. I have consumed like no alcohol in a very long time, so I could yep. feel it already. We're not, we're not putting any sugar in the cider to boost the alcohol content, where we're adding honey to boost the alcohol content on this side. So that may be part of what you're tasting is that the cider is more smooth, which is part of why it's a drinkable beverage. And this is more like a sipping beverage. Mm -hmm. I'd say all of this is, it would be great to have, you know, a small glass of dinner. Oh yeah. Not to chug, but just to sip. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I've, I've already tasted a little bit of cider. I'm just gonna start here since it's kind of okay. lighter and see. You know, I feel like for a cider, it's on the money. It's light, that's what it's mm -hmm. meant to be. Like we like to go to dinner, have a piece of pizza, a salad, and some cider. I could drink probably more of that than I probably ought to at dinner, mm. but I cannot drink a bunch of meat. No. It's too strong. Like it's just got a little bit of burn to it. I feel like this turned out good so far. And then my exciting uh, side of this is flavoring this with mm. other things. Yeah, that'd like be Like making fun. some black berry or berry, raspberry or marionberry cider. All right, let's try plum real quick. Wow. That's good. Is and that your favorite? That's, ah, I gotta get down here first, but I'm, I'm liking this a lot. I think that's gonna get better too. And it definitely has the mead flavor, which I like. Blueberry never lets down. Mm -hmm. That's a classic. It's reliable. It's easy to easy get to those get. blueberries, so that's good. I probably I wish I could have tried this first, because this is probably what I'm so excited about, just because it's in limited quantities. It's like special reserve. That's good. I am very excited about this. I think this year, whatever we need to do to get more of that, to get more peach. I make, know who to schmooze. I know a couple people who know a couple people. I think we should make peach cider too. That'd I think be that'll fun. be amazing. So this is this is delicious.
one, two liters for us, three pints for us, and then three little personal servings for us. And then two, four, six, eight, ten pints to share of blueberry. Well, we've done it again, guys. This is an amazing haul. It's so funny that this process is just happening in the background while life is happening, other projects are taking place, and you're sleeping. This stuff is turning into magic. We look forward to having this all year long and maybe even in a couple of years popping open a bottle and just remembering where we were in life when we bottled this stuff, kind of like a time capsule. And of course, we look forward to sharing each of these flavors uh, with friends, with neighbors, and new people that we probably haven't even met yet. And especially with people who have never had a homemade, home-brewed beverage like mead or our new exciting beverage, cider. Stay tuned. I want to try some really fun things with cider. We have a lot of extracts and juices and things that we make all year long, and I want to start playing with mixing that with our ciders. We hope this year to have such an abundant harvest. We know a lot of people are probably thinking about food right now, and we're very much gearing up for food, which is gonna start in about four weeks. That's all the time we have. So we have a lot of food projects coming, and this feels good to have it done. It's gonna feel good to have it on the shelf. And guess what? Start another batch. Wow, so refreshing. So good. Mm. Wow, blueberry. Blueberry, you know how to do it, blueberry. Plum, you're a keeper. You're a keeper.